All right, friends, we're back. Welcome back to another MicroWorks video. And today is hopefully gonna be a big day. We're gonna work on getting the brakes and brake lines run for, for this pan. And I really wanna get this thing as a roller. Um, I don't have my front suspension yet. So uh, when we get to putting it back on the ground, the stock suspension that's kind of laying over in the other part of the garage is going to go back on temporarily until my new um, air-cooled front beam shows up. Um, not sure when that's going to be. It might be a little while down the road. They're a little backed up. But I do believe I have all the components I need to put the brakes on. Um, and so I'll, I'll be running lines. I'll be setting up components. On the front, I'll probably just put the front rotors back, uh, the front drums back on in the back. I'm switching over to the discs. So when that front beam shows up, it's spindle to spindle. I should be able to just bolt the, the brakes on and uh, and turn this thing into a roller. But let's see what we got. Got some parts laid out here on the table, you know, starting from the master cylinder and, uh, you know, going through. I've, I had to, had to wait a few days because I, I didn't have the master cylinder bolts and spacers. Um, I have new brake lines. I've, uh, I've got the hard lines and soft lines. Um, my pedal assembly is down here, ready to go back on. Um, I actually have some other components for that showing up. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started and we're gonna start bolting that pedal assembly up into place. So I mentioned the bolts and spacers. So up here in the front bulkhead, you can really see the, the two piece uh, component nature of the bulkhead and the spacers go right in there between the the two pieces and it it, it ensures that the bulkhead doesn't collapse on you and that your uh, master cylinder stays in the right place and when you go to press the brakes um, you're not pulling the master cylinder uh, back toward the car and you're not pushing the um, brake pedal into the master cylinder more than what it needs to be. All right, so after a little fighting, uh, I got the pedal cluster back in and the master cylinder is on. Uh, those little sleeve bolts, uh, the sleeves for the bolts for the master cylinder uh, were a little long, so you probably saw me grind them down just a little bit and then lose, lose one of them repeatedly down in the bulkhead, um, but I, I fished it out with magnet. Um, just in mind, that bulkhead goes all the way down to uh, this hole. So if you, if you drop one, you got to go fishing for it. Um, I guess if you're working on this flat, it's not going to go all the way down there, probably. But so now I can start uh, running the brake lines. So I'm going to start with the fronts and then move over to the rears. And I have a bit of a surprise. So I showed you in the beginning of the video, uh, I've got a whole bunch of the brake components here on, on my little table. And then the magic black box. The magic black box. What's in the box? What's in the box? That, my friends, is a line lock. Yep. So my plan is actually I'm going to cap off one of the... Oops, let's roll back over. So you've got front and front for your... Um, off, coming off your master cylinder. And so I'm gonna cap one of these and actually just run one front into the line lock, uh, which is probably gonna be uh, set and located up here. That'll be underneath the fuel tank and out of the way. Um, and then I will split coming out of the line lock, go out to both the left and right brake. Uh, it should be no diminishment in power and it'll give me the ability to hit that button and have some fun. Now I'll put a link for this down in the description, uh, but it comes with a bunch of the hardware you need. So uh, mounting hardware, uh, some screws. Uh, it comes with the switch uh, to power it on and off. Uh, so it's a moment, momentary switch. And uh, then 
uh, um, indicator light and fuse. Uh, all this stuff will get wired up later. And then of course, your line lock device. So um, you have your in and your out, and that's not really hard after that. Give it, give it positive power and a ground. And as soon as you hit the switch, it locks it. Um, it then you let off your brakes and it keeps your front brakes locked and full pressure as long as you keep that switch pressed and you can start spinning your back wheels and work against your front brakes. And when you're ready to go, you let go of the switch and off you go. You can do a, uh, a nice burnout and of course, off-road use only. Do not do this on the street. Okay, here's what I'm doing. So I took my soft brake lines and just set them in place with the brake clips, uh, both bottom and top. They're both into their brackets. And I'm kind of looking to see how to mock this up. So in the brake line kit, there's all the other, all the brake lines that you need cut to roughly the right size. So all you have to do is go in and bend them with bending tool, and I'll show you that in a few minutes. But I have a roll of copper brake line as well because like I said, we're gonna run this line lock. So probably right up in here uh, would be a good place for it. I could probably mount it down here if I wanted to, get it out of the way. Um, what it did is I have a plug. Um, it's the same size, 10 millimeter, as the master cylinder holes. I've just got it set into place right now. When I go to tighten everything up, and make sure we're good on everything. I am gonna throw th some thread locker on it just because I wanna make sure that doesn't leak. Now, thinking about where the line lock, where do, I, where do I want that? How do I want that to run? A couple things to keep in mind is I've gotta run electric to it. Uh, there's gonna be some electric up here for the uh, fuel tank and headlights and whatnot. It's gonna be underneath the dashboard. So having it, in this area shouldn't be a big issue. I should have other power in this area. So I am really thinking that it's probably gonna go here on the frame head. I don't believe I have anything else in it, in that area that's gonna be in the way. So if I set it right there, I should be good. Am I screwing this up? Am I forgetting something? Hmm. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mock it up and I'm gonna come, I'm gonna, get a, some fuel line with that copper line and I'm gonna mock up a section that's gonna go from here and up to here. And I'll show you how you flare the ends on that. The fuel line I have comes with ends. So we'll run a piece that fits here to here and then out, we'll ha I have a T um, and we'll run the T, it'll run from the outlet to our T Probably won't be right here in the same location. I'll probably bend it over here, uh, outlet out to the T, and then that will T out to the uh, right brake, passenger side, and the driver side. So we'll see where we go from there. Let me do some test fitting. I looked at our line lock a little bit further, looked at some of the instructions. Hmm, why would I look at the instructions? And it's actually pretty cool. Um, so it came with, it looked like two bolts on the sides. A um, little Frankenstein looking, you know, just bolt on either side. And I go to look through the instructions like I should have. You know, it's set up. It's got a bolt here, a bolt here. Uh, it, your inlet line, so coming from your master cylinder, and then uh, going out. But this is an out, and that's an out. So I really can take one of these, use it as a plug. discard the other one, well, put it off the side, not discard. And now I don't need the other T. I can run both sides of our front brakes right off of this guy. So if I mount it here, then I can run the passenger side right off of one side and driver side right off the other. And that should be very convenient. So I won't end up using this pre-cut length, I'll cut a piece of the copper line and bend it to length to go in there. So um, what I'm gonna do is 
since I'm going to go right up in here, I'm going to take my copper line and I'm going to roughly figure out how, how long I need to go because I'm going to come from this port on the master cylinder up to this port, this top port on the line lock. So if I take it and roughly estimate, I'm going to say about there. If I'm too long, I'm too long. I'd rather be too long than too short. Then you take a tubing cutter, just add it. Take your standard plumbing tubing cutter, one of these little guys is perfect, and gently clamp it down on your line. Now, if you've never cut copper for um, for doing interior plumbing, all you're gonna do is set it on here till it's snug, not tight, snug, and just roll it around. And what it's doing is it's etching the copper uh, line itself. And every couple turns, you're just gonna tighten it down just a little bit more. Because what you're trying to do is get the cutting wheel in here to cut into the copper a little bit. A little more snug. It'll start to cut into the copper. It gets easier to roll around. You just snug it up, and it's really just a fraction of a turn each time. And it just it cuts through a little bit more each time, and then it's through. Now, what it does is it leaves you with um, some slight burring on there. You don't want to leave the burr because that ends up becoming a problem later. And I grabbed something earlier from downstairs. Let's see where did it go? Which side is it? I know I have it. I have a small file. I thought I left it on my tool cart here with me. And I'm going to run a small file in that hole, clean it up. Um, probably take some steel wool running around there as well just to make sure that I don't have a rough edge on the end of that copper. I really don't want to have anything before I run it through the flare tool. Alright, so we're going to do a little lesson here. Um, we have our brake line that we just cut over there with the with the buggy uh, that we were going to run from our master cylinder over to our inlet side on our line lock. Uh, the problem is if you put one of these uh, crimp ends on one of the, the nuts on that goes into here or into another part of your brake system um, without putting a flare on the end of this, it will leak and you don't want it to leak. So first thing we're gonna do, uh, I showed you we, we cut it and we ran the file down in there and I'll show you again real quick since I did it off camera. Um, I have these small needle files that I got from Harbor Freight run it in there and I just kind of deburr it, clean it up, make sure there's nothing on it. And I hit the outside of it with, with some steel wool um, that I've got over there. Um, you take your end that you're gonna have on your on your line and slide it on, all right? Don't forget to put it on because if, if you're putting it on a longer line, then if you don't put this on, you're kind of SOL. And with our tool that we have, um, this is a double flaring tool, this, uh, bracket has a whole bunch of different sizes on it for uh, various sizes of tubing, all the way up to half inch. We're not going to go to half inch. We're going to go to three sixteenths, which is the size of our line. Now we're going to loosely put it in there, and we're just going to um, loosely tighten it, not tight tight yet, okay? Because you see all of our little insert pieces here. We're going to take our first one. Um, it's marked as 3 16 It's marked right there. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera. Um, it's actually marked right there, embossed. Um, we're going to set it in the hole right next to it because we're going to have our tubing the same depth as that piece. So you want to try to set your tubing down to that length. Now we can crank it down, put our piece back out of the way. 
We'll come back to him in a minute. Crank down our brake line tool. All right. And you see this, this kit actually came with a cutter, which is nice. Um, I'll put a link to this one in, um, in the description as well. I think I got this one off of Amazon. Uh, you can get them from, Har from Harbor Freight. You can get them from pretty much anywhere. Um, all right, so the, what we're going to do then is take our press. So this this thing presses down and goes on either side. I'll show you how it works, but you see this little um, tip? That's what's actually going to create part of our flare. So we'll back it all the way out. We're going to thread it over our tube. We're going to take our 3 16th piece. It has a stem on it. You see that stem on there? I'm going to slide that stem down in our um, brake line. And then start to, and you want to snug it down. Let's see if I can keep the angle so I can show you what I'm doing here. And then you want to tighten this down until it bottoms out, uh, until it bottoms out against the frame of the piece. It requires a little bit of force. Just keep keep pressing it down. Make sure your tool is nice and tight so it's not going to back your brake line out. What it's doing is it's pressing it against the flare part of the tool. All right, bottomed out. Back it out. Take it off. Now we have a single flare on there. Um, you can see, you can see those are recessed in. So we, what we did using this tool is we we pressed pressed it back into that that dimple. All right. So we take this guy, put him away. Or we'll take our tool, thread it back on, and run it back down until it's just snug back down into your brake line all right so this is the second part if you ever heard of a double flare this is the second part of the flare not the double so we just did a single flare uh, this is our double so we take that pin on our vise and it bends it down and let's tighten that down all the way and once we're tight hi babe hi once we're tight not too tight <laughs> And bottomed out, we back it out again, get our piece out of the way. Move this guy out of the way. Loosen our brackets. And let's observe what our, our brake line looks like. Let's see what our flare looks like. Now it does, because it's got these contact ridges in it, uh, it does make a little mark on your brake line. But what it gives you is a nice flared brake line. So now when you go to tighten it down, it's going to tighten down properly. And you're going to be able to get a nice good, a nice tight seal between that brake line and the housing that you're putting it into. All right, so now that's, that's really nice. So now for this one, I'm just going to repeat that with the other end because this end's going to go in the master cylinder. I just want to make sure that I pull, when I pull that end plug off, that I also put my new piece on. Because if I don't, I'm going to have to cut this and pull both of these pieces off and start all over. Um, <laughs> you'll do it. I guarantee you're going to do it. You'll, you'll forget and you will, uh, you'll you have to sacrifice some copper or some brake line. Um, but that, that's a tie make uh, a new brake line section. Okay, and so through the magic of time lapse, you can see the front brake lines are in. Um, they're a little wavy here and there, so I'm going to work on smoothing them out, um, getting them, especially this guy down here, because there's some lumpy bumpies in him, but I'm gonna work on getting those out. What I really wanted to make sure was that uh, I stay clear of the fuel line up here. So where the fuel line com comes out, I've got clear passage. And down here, I have enough space between the master cylinder supply lines 
uh, in the master cylinder reservoir and um, what goes to the driver's side front brake. But there it is. It is plumbed up from the uh, master cylinder up to the line lock and out to the driver's side and the passenger side front brake. There we go. We have rear brake lines run. Back through the bulkhead, I need to put the grommets in. Nothing's tight, tight, tight right now. It's just in there, finger tight. Run it down along the channel beside the seat, up through, through the other hole that needs grommets, and then back to the T with a soft line down the swing arm, up across the back, to the other connector, to the soft line, to that swing arm. So there we are. There's a, there's brake lines. That's a, that's a big deal. Uh, it's very exciting on my part. Uh, next, we're going to actually put the rear brakes on this guy and uh, get it on the ground. We've got to do some work and some other stuff so that it can be a roller, but uh, I'm excited. We are so close to this thing being rollable. Um, it hasn't rolled since the fall when we took it all apart, but we're right there, guys. Right there. We're going to get there. Uh, really exciting. I really appreciate all of you being there, all the support, comments I'm getting. Uh, stuff starting to really start start to take off and, and, and move a little bit faster. So please keep, continue to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think. Uh, tell your friends, and we're going to keep this sucker rolling this summer. Uh, weather's turning up nice. We're starting to warm up here a few days here and there. Um, this summer, this thing is going to be on the road. It's not going to be done, but it's going to be on the road. All right. We'll see you soon. Take care. See you next time.